new topic. We will start with frequency response. Right? You might think, why do I need frequency response? Now, let me ask you. We have been working on DC so far. Now, what if I have a capacitor? How will you solve this problem? What is the gain of this uh, circuit? First of all, what type of amplifier is this? Common source, very good, because this is MOS. I go to the very basics. This is drain, this is source, because drain is a higher potential. So input is at gates, output as a drain is common source. And do you know what is the gain of this amplifier? By inspection. He said should be negative GM RO parallel RD is at DC. Now, what if we go to higher frequency? What should that be? No, I mean, super high frequency is zero, but I want you to express it as a function of frequency. Let me ask you another question. What if this is replaced by a resistor called RC? What is the output impedance then? Do you know? I'm not output, yeah, I gave you the hint. What is the gain? Do you remember how to find the gain of a circuit? Negative GM times RO, right? What is the capital GM of this one? Small GM. What is the R out of this circuit? Exactly. RO parallel RD parallel RC. But now we want to work in the frequency domain. We learned that before. Exactly. Yeah, because we work in the frequency domain. So, so I will just treat the C as a uh, impedance, Zc, right? Which is equal to negative Gm, Ro parallel Rd, parallel one over Sc. Done. You did not learn anything new. You know that already. So you already know how to solve any circuit in their frequency domain, as long as you have the capacitor given to you. Right, so that's it, right? So we were done, we can graduate. But however, uh, we want to uh, go through something uh, more uh, useful by inspection. But before that, let's just remind ourselves what is the meaning of frequency response, okay? So we have something called transfer function. This is the transfer function. When we say, a s equal to something, it means v out s divided by v in s. That is all we have been, have been doing in this class. Output divided by input. Characterize the circuit. Okay, I don't know if uh, have, uh, you understand this. All we are doing, right? All electrical circuits, system or mechanical engineer. It's just a machine. And what we care is that how the machine responds to our input. And because we know how it responds, we can give some useful inputs to get a useful result. That's basically what we're doing every day, right? So that is called transfer function. And one of the simplest one is of course the gain. I have this input voltage, what output voltage I get. Output divided by input is the gain. In general, the transfer function can depend on the frequency, can be a compressed number. We can make it very compressed. It's just because it contains more information. It even tells us that at zero hertz, how it responds, at 100 gigahertz, how it responds, captured by one transfer function, okay? So, and we usually plot this on the body plot, right? This is the transfer function. Let me just transfer function. What do we plot in the body plot? Exactly. We plot, uh, maybe I just, 
I don't know why I write in this way. So the body plot, void plot is 20 log the magnitude, right? Versus the log of the maybe frequency. Is this okay? Basically, it's saying that, well, how does this magnitude change when I change the frequency, right? So when we try to look at this one, we try to look at the transfer function of this one, right? And just now we already showed it. You can go for KCL, KVL, you will get the same result as inspection. For this circuit, for this common source, the transfer function, let's call it, uh, I should not call it A here, maybe it's better to, to call it H. The transfer function I already show you is just equals to, I mean, even I did not write it. Do you remember what it is? Negative GM, RD. I'm going to ignore RO for simplicity. Yeah, very good, right? No CLM. Good. And then what's so in, what is so interesting about this transformation is going to be a polynomial divided by another polynomial, right? We always express in this way. So you just go through some math, right? This is uh, Rd times that, guys, will be Rd. They just trust me, it becomes SRDCL, right? Or negative GMRd divided by 1 plus SRDCL. For this transfer function, uh, do we have a pole? What is that? How do you find a pole? Hmm? Very good. Find a pole by setting the new the denominator to zero, one plus S R D C L equal to zero. So the pole is negative one over R D C L. Right, we do have a pole, right? I mean, maybe I will just call it pole equals to S, okay? So we have a pole, right? What is the magnitude of this transfer function? Well, I will just take the... magnitude of this guy. Is that okay? which is equals to GMRD, this is positive. And then here I'm going to change S to J omega. Okay, so what is the magnitude of a complex number? Square root one plus omega square RD square CL square. You should know, you know this already, but I need to be fast, right? But that is the magnitude of it, right? So I find a pole, I find this one, and then I can do the body plot. Okay, let me repeat what I wrote, found earlier. What is that? H of S equals to GMRD. Square root, thank you. Square root, 1 plus omega square, Rd square, Cl square, okay? So let's start. What is our goal? We want to do the body plot, and we already say what we're trying to do, right? On the x-axis, it is log frequency, okay? In this particular case, I will just put log uh, omega. So you need to be careful what people are plotting. And here I'm going to put 20 log h of s. Okay, so let's start with low frequency, case one. When omega is very small, right? What does it mean? It means when omega is much smaller than one over r d c l. Low frequency, right? This means what? It means omega square r d c l square is much smaller than one 
You see that? I just move this here, right? This is much less than one, right? So I have this. Then this term becomes what? About one, right? One plus a small number. So 20 log <coughs> h is equals to 20 log gm rd divided by one, which is just 20 log gm rd. So okay? And this is constant. It does not depend on the frequency, right? So I will have a gain like this. So just keep going, constant gain, right? Of course, it's not real constant. It's only constant under approximation, right? If omega equals to one over R D C L, then it means Omega square, R D square, C L square equals to. I move this one to here and take the square. Your one, right? One square, right? So then 20 log H equals to 20 log G M D R D divided by what? Square root two. And log x divided by y is log x minus log y, right? So this is 20 log g m r d, same as here. And then minus 20 log, oh, I did make, did I make a mistake? Oh yeah, square root two. Do you know why is this? This is free dB, okay? Yeah, so it means at this point, in reality, it actually will reduce by free dB. This is the pole at the pole equals to omega One over R D C L, right? It turned out this is the pole. I did not mention it, right? This is the pole. One over R D C L. So when it is at the pole, this is in reality. This is going to be three dB. Right? I will mention that more later, right? So this is an approximation in both parts, right? But in reality, it's decreased by three dB at this point. That's why this is the three dB three dB point. Okay. Now, what if the omega is much larger than R D C L? What will happen? Then it means R D C L omega is much larger than one. Then what does the function look like? Right, it becomes 20 log, the top is gm rd divided by omega rd cl, right? Because one is small, right? Compared to this, so I only keep this term and take the square root, right? And what is this? I'm going to explain it in a few ways. First, the, num the numerator is 20 log gm rd, constant. Minus, I'm going to break the bottom to two parts. 20 log rd cl, right? 20 log rd cl, constant. But 20 log omega. Because divided by omega, I can minus 20 log omega, right? And then divided by rd cl, minus 20 log rd cl. Is this okay? In case you don't see it, right? Just log A divided by B C equal to log A minus log B minus log C. Right? You can say minus log B C, but minus log B C is minus log B minus log C. Is that clear? And the main point I want to highlight is here. Right? 
right? If omega increase, ten x. If this increase by ten times, what happened to this number? Log ten becomes one. Then it twenty log h decrease by twenty db, right? And that's why you have this nine, which is twenty minus twenty db per decade Celsius. So, Now, I know you learned this before, but I just uh, before you graduate, right? Uh, just review one more time. That would be good. Okay. So you see that in the whole thing is that uh, the body part has is rigorous, and then it has approximation. Instead of saying it is minus three dB, we just assume it is the same. But that is okay. We understand that in reality, at the pole, it is minus three dB. Okay. So in order to do the body part, so from now on, instead of uh, going through this math, we understand for the pole, for example, what should I give you? Um, for example, I have a function which is equals to One over s minus omega one times s minus omega two. How do we plot it? Find the two poles. Thank you. Find the two poles and change them. But I don't know what what where, where is the starting point. I just pick one. When I hit the first pole, it will go down. I hit the second pole, you go down even faster. So why is this? Negative 20 dB per decade. How about this one, the next one? Negative 40 dB per decade. Because my equation tell me that it will just go forever, right? So when I hit another pole, I have the previous uh, slope. If it have a zero, you can go back to try it. And it is similar. For example, if I have h of s equals to, for example, uh, s minus omega one zero, s minus omega two zero square. Do you know how to do this one? How do we do this one? Okay, no, no. This is the function I gave you. They are not related. Here it's turned out that I have a function that has two pole. And here it's turned out I have function that has no pole, but how many zero does it have? Three, right? So what are the zeros? Very good. One zero at W one C and then two zero and W two Z, right? So how should I draw it? I just assume I start from here. And what happened when I hit the first zero? Right. It increased by 20 dB per decade, right? And then when I hit the second zero, what happened? Plus 60. So, I mean, further plus 40. Good. So it becomes 60, very good. Yeah, okay, so this is a brief review. Oh yeah, uh, here we, we don't care about the application, just want to do the body part, yeah, okay. Okay, so at this stage, right, 